In tonight's Eyewitness In-Depth, we are talking about the second honor flight to leave Evansville Regional Airport, which will be this Saturday. More than 70 World War II veterans will be flying to Washington, D.C. I'm joined tonight by Dr. Richard Litoff on the right, the president of the Freedom Heritage Museum, and Arlen McRae, a World War II Marine. Both will be on that honor flight uh, this weekend. When I first met you tonight, I, I called you Mr. McRae, and then we, we began talking, and I asked you, well, can I call you Arlen? And you, you said yes, and I appreciate that very much. Arlen, uh, you fought at Iwo Jima. Yes. And uh, you were wounded there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. I had we fought uh, on the front line. For several days, we had crossed a sandy area where we had really had, really caught a lot of injuries. They shelled us repeatedly. And then we uh, moved up to a ridge, and we were pinned down on the ridge. There was a cliff uh, over to her right. And they had zeroed in on us, so you can't, couldn't move without getting shot at. I would roll, jump out of my bunk and roll down beyond the, the line of fire when I would go down to see the uh, lieutenant about anything. Uh, there was a Japanese, that, a dead Japanese, that was uh, within six feet of me. He had been eating rice, and someone had thrown a hand grenade and blown the back of his head off. And uh, my, my bunk, my uh, foxhole buddy, my, my sergeant had told me he wanted me to hold in with this kid that was always messing up, getting messed up. He said, I want you to hold in with him. If he's going to do something stupid to get some of my men killed, knock him in the head. It wasn't a pleasant uh, assignment anyhow. He kept wanting to go through his pockets, and I said, they often booby trap their dead. I don't want you touching him. Well, I was called down to the uh, lieutenants down at the uh, foxhole down at the bottom of the hill, and while I was gone, he decided to go through his pockets. The first thing that happens when a, to a body on a volcanic island is it the stomach bloats uh, fills up with gases and he tried to put his hands in this guy's pockets and his belly was bloated so that he, so he put his K bar and stabbed it and it covered that whole hill with a foul smell everybody was ready to kill and him and you were you were shot during this period of time i <laughs> I hate to tell you how I was shot. I was up on this ridge. We were short on ammo, very short on water, and short on food. <clears throat> they first tried uh, this, bringing a, uh, trucks across this sandy area, and they knocked those out. Then they tried bringing over jeeps with a lot of several jeeps, and they knocked all of those out. And then they were bringing in uh, over with uh, uh, men running, carrying stuff, bags of food, bags of water, whatever. The only one that got through was carrying mail. <laughs> he put it, put it in my bunk, my, uh, my foxhole, and he said, will you pass this out? I've got to get back before dusk or I get shot by my own men. So I said, yeah, I'll pass it out. So I was sending it by air mail. <laughs> this is not a good, good way to be telling about how, how gloriously you were on kill or shot on the front line. <laughs> I was passing out mail, <laughs> tearing a hole in the, in the envelope and filling it full of sand. And I'd call his name out and, and hurl it over. I sent it by air mail. One guy had three. Uh, letters, and he was a good friend. And I called his name, and I called, and I didn't get an answer. And finally, I st stood up. 
And you to, got shot. To call, and that's when I got shot. And you were shot right, right, right here. Went in here and out here. And one thing that you had told me, a story you shared, uh, was that uh, our, our soldiers then, it was almost like they were, the wording you used, trained to hate the Japanese. But you, you saw this one Japanese soldier. How old were you when, when this was going on? I was just was barely 19. And how old was this young Japanese soldier? This kid looked like he was 13. And what, did, what, what lesson did that provide to you? It, I, I kept looking at him and thinking, he doesn't look evil. I had been trained to believe that Japanese were evil. And I thought, he does not look evil. I think if we were maybe lived on the same block, uh, we'd be good, good friends. And then when I got to, that's when I first realized that all the things I had been told were not exactly true. And you saw the raising of the flag on Iwo Jima, the, yes. the monument in Washington, uh, D.C. that is, it's an iconic uh, figure of uh, America. You were able to see this uh, yes. at the foot of the mountain there on Iwo Jima. Uh, I'm going to ask R Richard Litoff now, who you're a guardian. You and your wife will be guardians, and you're going to be working uh, with uh, uh, several uh, people on this flight. What role will you play in this flight? Well, every uh, veteran that's on board this flight, and there are 70, each one has a guardian to basically watch and take care of them. If they need something to eat or drink, uh, assist them if, as much as they need assistance getting in and out of the buses. If they have any questions, we're there to uh, make sure that it's a very uh, pleasant and uh, memorable occasion for them. So uh, each veteran has their very own guardian. It's a very well organized program. Everybody is. Uh, trained up front, both the guardians as well as the, the veterans. There's a special gathering this Thursday for a dinner, greet, registration, uh, so everybody knows what the schedule's going to be. Uh, it's a very well done program, and this is Evansville's chance to really shine. This is their second uh, time doing the honor flight, and this is the first time that they uh, have it uh, in, in full control. Uh, by themselves. Arlen, you know, I, I, I told you uh, earlier this evening, and uh, you know, some World War II veterans, I, I'll always ask, uh, for privacy's sake, some vets don't really like to talk about their experiences, but you obviously are very articulate in describing uh, the, the memories that you had. Uh, but your fellow, your fellow veterans this weekend, uh, the camaraderie there, what is this honor flight going to mean for you now at this point in your life? Your wonderful life. Uh, I really don't know yet. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Uh, a guy in my church went last year, and he said, "Oh, you just have to go." And I really don't know what I really don't know what to expect, really. Well, there's going to be one heck of a homecoming for you when you yes, come home. Yeah. Uh, when you came home the first time from from the war, you were at Marine. How long? About uh, two was, years, four uh, years, three in, years. Uh, uh, two years and four months. What kind of homecoming did you come to? Japan home to Japan as occupation troops. Uh, I served in Japan uh, as occupation, and uh, so. Uh, and and uh, the homecoming then, when you came home the, from the actual war, the first yes. homecoming. What was that like? <laughs> you know, or was fun. it a homecoming? Was it a ticker, ticker tape parade or? or how no, was it? I. <clears throat> I was supposed to get in from Chicago, well, first of all, they told me at Chicago, and, uh, at the, uh, uh, Chicago where I was discharged, they said, you really need to have your jaw operated on. And I said, how long will it take? Six months at least. I said, will I get to go home? They said, no. I said, what will I do? Well, you, a Marine can always stand guard. I said, like hell, I will. <laughs> I'll take my star and go home. I haven't had a monitor, Denver. Have we been able to show a picture of uh, Mr. McCray? Uh, just if we can, I don't know if we can, if we can throw that clip up just one more time. This is uh, this uh, young Marine 
at the time this was all happening. We could talk for another hour and a half and we still wouldn't get done, but uh, Dr. Lidoff, thank you for being with us. Uh, it is very good to, to meet you and there, there are so many either. stories to share and there will be so many stories on that <laughs> flight uh, this weekend. Thank you so much, Arlen, for being You're with welcome. us tonight.